Good morning. Today is the 10th day of May and uh, we have some scriptures and some thoughts and some ideas which you may not have thought about before and we hope that you will find them uplifting and perhaps challenging as we move through the daily post for today. We begin with the scripture as usual and today it's from uh, the book of Ecclesiastes and chapter 5 and verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. If you're reading the Bible in a year with us, uh, we move on today through the second book of Kings, chapters 10, 11, and 12, and John, chapter 1, verse 29 to 51. The thoughts of the day. He who has imagination without learning has wings but no feet. Women who seek to be equal with men lack ambition. Honesty isn't a policy at all. It's a state of mind. And that's very true. The motivational thought for the day. God never makes a promise without giving the power to make it come true. On this day, in 1869, in the United States, the first coast-to-coast railway was completed. In 1954, on this day, Bill Haley and the Comets released Rock Around the Clock, And it all began there. 1960, on this day, the US atomic submarine, the USS Triton, completed the first submerged circumnavigation of the globe. In 2017, on this day, Apple became the first company to be worth more than $800 billion. In 2022, the US reported the highest rate of gun-related deaths in 24 years in the year 2020. According to the CDC, with firearm homicide increased 35% to 6.1 deaths per 100,000 people nationwide. I don't know that it's got any better since then. It's a terrible situation. The personal story of the day is entitled Clearing the Hurdles. I don't usually get my spiritual motivation from country and western songs, but I happen to hear this on the radio while I've been under the weather. Quote, I broke off my rear view mirror because I ain't looking back, unquote. <laughs> the biggest crippler of dreams, faith, healthy relationships, joy, love and peace is one's haunting past. Like a bad penny, it keeps coming back. It sabotages all that is good. It robs us of the enjoyment of today and the hope of tomorrow. It strikes fear in the bravest hearts. We silently question, will they find out what I did? One well-known author played a prank on some influential friends by sending a telegram to these eight politicians. The telegram read, All is found out. Flee at once. Within 24 hours, most of them had left town. That's a really sad story. In the first epistle of John, chapter 1 and verse 7, we read, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. When we confess our past and take responsibility for our actions, it does seven things. Firstly, it brings forgiveness from God. Secondly, it ensures God's peace. Thirdly, it renews our hope. Fourthly, it lightens our load. Fifthly, it dispels our fear. Sixthly, it restores our love 
And seventh, it clears our conscience. Do not remain guiltier for one day longer. Deal with it. Praise the Lord. Devotional thoughts of the day. The first, with God's support. The scripture is from Psalm 51 and verse 18, references from Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 11 to 20. Do good in thy pleasure unto Zion, build thou the walls of Jerusalem. China recently found a new section of the famous Great Wall. It had been covered by sand for centuries in the northwestern Ningxia province. It was uncovered by archaeologists in the autumn of 2002. It's 80 kilometres long and it was built in 1530s. One of the watchtowers was said to be still in good condition. Constructed from the 7th century BC onwards, the Great Wall stretches for 3,700 miles and was built to protect the country from northern invaders. The section north of Beijing is a popular tourist destination these days. Nehemiah would have loved it. There was no human reason for Nehemiah to jeopardise his pretty stable career. But when he heard the news of Jerusalem in ruins, he mourned, fasted and prayed. Then he risked everything by showing his feelings in the king's presence. God rewarded his faith by giving him favour in Artaxerxes' eyes. He was granted a leave of absence, a voucher for building supplies and an armed escort as we read in the book of Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah showed faith by pursuing the vision God had put in his heart, as we read in verse 12. The vision was to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Once he arrived, he pursued it with patience and wisdom, first scouting out the situation. Then he went to the people with a persuasive presentation. To their credit, when he cast the vision and recounted how God had already worked, in verse 18, they responded in faith. They took on a challenge. Jerusalem had been sacked and burned, as we read in Jeremiah 52, verses 12 to 16. Local Gentiles mocked and opposed their efforts. Geshem apparently ran a profitable spice trade in the region, and he may have feared that a revived Israel would interfere with it. There were only a relative handful of Jews to do the work, and Artaxerxes could have interpreted strengthening the city as a prelude to rebellion. Despite all this, God protected them, and Nehemiah led the project to a successful conclusion, as we read in Nehemiah's book, chapter 6, verses 15 and 16. Even more importantly, the physical rebuilding was coupled with the spiritual rebuilding. Thanks to the faithful leadership of Nehemiah, the people could sing. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. That's from Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 1. <coughs> Nehemiah and the returned exiles faced a situation similar to that which we face today. There is a lot of pressure against those seeking to preach the gospel and build a healthy church. But God is with those who do his work. Amen. The second thought, don't look at the circumstances. The scripture from Matthew 13 verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. The easiest way to get discouraged is to look at circumstances. We all tell people not to, quote, judge a book by its cover, unquote, meaning the inside may be far more appealing than the cover. And a person that you are looking at, although they may not be appealing to you from the outward appearance, may have a different inward attraction. You have to get 
to know a person before you can judge whether or not you will like or appreciate what you see. The same way with our circumstances. They may look like they are out of control. Humans never want to relinquish control. They may look ponderous, they're too big for us to take. Or they may look simply embarrassing, quite unappealing. Sometimes, when we get to looking at our circumstance, they take hold of us, moving us into doubt and unbelief. We all want our projects to soar to heights unknown to humans, to rise above all the others. That's just being human. But being a Christian, we need to realise that things, firstly, happen in God's timing, and secondly, happen for a purpose, maybe unknown to us at the time, and thirdly, God is never late with his answers. We need to keep our sights focused on God and his word and what it says for us. Otherwise, we will quickly be overtaken into doubt and unbelief. Keep the faith. We have another set of eyes and another pair of ears which the world cannot know. We're going to look at uh, some thoughts in verse today and uh, this is... Uh, Chorus 642, it's entitled Desert Song, although it's not much about the desert, I don't think, but it is about how we rely on the Lord uh, and how we should be praising him for the things that happen in our life. There are four verses and a chorus and a bridge, so we'll just do two verses and the chorus today and we'll do the rest tomorrow. Verse 1 says, This is my prayer in the desert, when all that's within me feels dry. This is my prayer in my hunger and need. My God is the God who provides. The second verse says, This is my prayer in the fire, in weakness or trial or pain. There is a faith proved of more worth than gold, so refine me, Lord, through the flames. And the chorus says, And I will bring praise, I will bring praise. No weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice. I will declare. God is my victory and he is here. What wonderful words uh, to, to meditate on during this day. If you know the chorus, sing it to yourself because this is a way of uh, uplifting us and also giving praise to the Lord at the same time. God is my victory and he is here. Amen to that. The facts of the day. It was at a concert in Minneapolis in 1954 that El Dvoran closed Elvis's concert with the line, quote, Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building. Thank you and good night, unquote. Fine. Tap dancing originated from the Irish clog dancing and what is called the Irish reel and jig. Okay, and the closing thought for the day. I am thankful for the alarm that wakes me in the morning, for it means that I am alive. Amen to that. We hope that today's thoughts will be uh, uplifting, perhaps challenging and certainly helpful for you through the day. We thank you for joining us and we hope you'll join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, we hope the Lord will bless your day and bye for now.